featuring, of course, all your favorite champions players, of course, including a few extras. Uh, you might notice some of the players from I Am's female team, I Am Athena, playing, competing here as well. Of course, down to our final match of the night is Trace takes on Arrow, of course, Jin Air Green Wings versus KT Rolster, respectively, and uh, at least as far as champions are concerned, the, the uh, record between Rolster and Jin Air Green Wings stands at, well, absolutely nothing. They have yet to play against each other this season, so it'll be exciting to see if... Uh, Maybe this is a uh, portent of things to come. Picks and bans for game number one, of course, already taken care of. And, uh, you know, Arrow has some really weird ideas about what to ban here. He's like, Caitlyn, is that a strong champion? Nah, better ban out Evelyn. Why is Evelyn strong? Uh, you know, mysteries of the universe, man. I would not expect her to be top tier at all as far as uh, 1v1s are concerned. Uh, maybe just because she has a lot of, you know, upfront burst damage, she's very stealthy, uh... I don't know. Like I said, mysteries of the universe. But, uh, the Heimerdinger ban makes a lot of sense, so does the Lucian. Uh, and actually, Lucian bans against Arrow, it should be expected so far. Uh, just based on his, uh, very strong AD carry play, and of course you can see three AD carries banned against him. But, of course, you can't ban them all. And that will leave Ezreal up for him, and, you know, to be honest, I'm actually, I guess, kind of a big fan of, uh, Trace's Ezreal versus the Morgana, though, um, I don't know if I'm quite as big a fan of Morgana. We already saw a very, a very slow, thoughtful, melo m melodical, this sounds good, but it's, uh, also methodical, uh, play out of Trace as far as his Morgana is concerned, just continue to uh to torment and soil the wave over and over again and uh, you know lather it repeat till you win the, until you win the game now arrow should be a slightly higher caliber player at least um you know by all initial impressions than uh than a bunny was in our last series or at least his you know previous opponent but at the same time i uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the uh ezreal versus morgana because traditionally you know, you'd pick an 80 carry because of their ability to wave clear so something like you know graves something like Sivir, something like lucian just because they can use their area of effect abilities to clear out creep waves incredibly quickly to keep that minion pressure on uh it will be somewhat similar to the strategy being employed here however a lot of extra safety for, um, I almost said rookie, but for Arrow, I, I keep like thinking of other AD carry names, but uh, yeah, a lot of safety in picking Ezreal, not necessarily anything too groundbreaking, but at the same time, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, something that's going to you know, completely win you the game uh, outright. And so uh, it should be some, make for some good dueling. I, uh, I would expect Arrow to play a little bit more aggressively to try to force this advantage. It's something that he has definitely done earlier on today, but uh, the, the, the real problem being for Morgana is that if you miss a Dark Binding, which should be relatively difficult to land on Ezreal thanks to, uh, thanks to Arcane Ship, uh, it's gonna be interesting to watch. Game of one, coming up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King. 1v1 tournament, of course, here brought to you on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid. You guys are awesome, so thank you for tuning in to uh, the 1v1 match. Final one of the day as Arrow faces off against Trace. Now, if you're just now joining us, you missed the way that both of these players got to this point in the tournament. Well, of course, you can check out full brackets for the Solo King. Heading over to lol.esportspedia.com. Uh, it'll be prominently displayed there, and you can check out all the info that you need. Uh, but at least for the time being, uh, Solo King has been dominated by players from KT Rolster. Uh, of course, represented here by Arrow, who uh, took a 2-0 victory over Watch 
Trace with a two or two one victory over Watch. Trace with a two zero victory over Bunny to meet here in the finals. Ezreal versus Morgana for game number one, and Arrow uh, losing that matchup. I think that is fairly safe to say. Uh, he'll be heading his way all the way back to base. Of course, Trace probably headed back there as well, uh, just to make sure you start off the lane with as much HP as possible. Minion and a half into the game, minions spawning, and Arrow kind of spawning along with them. They'll walk out of base at a very, I guess, timely time. Jenner Trace a little bit slower out of base. But at the same time, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Already a uh, Tormented Soil skilled up there for Trace. Uh, Doran's Ring with Poison Utility. Now, we didn't actually get a chance to see Runes and Mastery, so this is going to be a little bit of a different take on... Uh, Morgana here for Trace, you know, just trying out different things and trying to figure out exactly how this lane is supposed to work out. Uh, as far as Trace is concerned, you know, it's going to be mostly about the shove game, so you try to push the wave as quickly as possible, but look how quickly Arrow is actually CSing this wave, and while he may not hit every single CS, and I think this is going to be perfect CS on the first wave here for Trace, wow! The Mystic Shot, I don't know if it's like, you know, these minions are on diets, it's just like... Super easy to hit between them, but at this point, oh, early level 2 here for Trace, alright. Or for, uh, for Arrow, Trace hitting level 2, 1 creep after him. But one big advantage that Trace is going to have is that even though he is, is that he has 10% uh, you know, passive life steal, or passive spell vamp. And even though his primary way of you know, dealing magic damage is you know, through Tormented Soil, and that cuts that 10% from thirds, that is still a decent amount of health coming back when you consider that, uh, you know, the Tormented Soil does go on to basically the entire wave, so good way of getting health back, and we'll see if that sustain advantage favors Trace, or if, you know, maybe there's an early Vampiric Scepter in, uh, in Arrow's build. I think that is the build that I've seen AD carry start to sort of evolve over the course of this tournament, is instead of attacking, uh, instead of just stacking up, you know, Doran's Blade after Doran's Blade, you actually hold off a little bit, pick up a uh, Longsword on your first trip back, and then build that into a Vamp Scepter, at which point you should theoretically have the strongest, uh, you know, a, a, an amount of lifesteal strong enough to withstand just about anything. Teleport coming in off of the very first back here from Trace. We'll grab a uh, second Doran's Ring, second Doran's Blade, you know, there to uh, kind of counter it out there uh, for Arrow. Uh, but the bigger advantage, or the bigger difference, bigger advantage is that the primary pushing power here from Morgana is represented by her mana pool. And now, oh, Arrow, look at that damage being put back onto Trace. No AP or anything crazy like that, but taking off a good quarter of his HP. Keeping an open mind as far as this matchup is concerned should be Trace favored, but with Arrow playing this aggressively, of course, keep in mind neither laner actually taking Ignite means it's not going to be super aggressive, but you get the idea. Uh, Arrow pushing aggressive. Wow, that Dark Biting landed again! And a Cannon Minion picked up off the Tormented Soil. Man, Trace has been landing some pretty choice bindings if I do say so myself looking for another dark binding to land he hits it again and I think this point in time oh a couple more auto attacks there's a flash auto to pick up the kill for arrow all it's gonna take is a tormented soil trace walking forward there's the tormented soil two ticks and auto and a narrow escape there by arrow or an arrow escape if you want to look at it that way Trace, unfortunately, does not have Flash as his second summoner spell. It's a barrier. I'm not sure why you'd bring barrier. Maybe against the all-in case if you're trading really closely. But for Morgana, you should be either looking to win off CS, because you have such great pushing power, uh, or maybe win off a kill. And both of those would say maybe run summoner heal and then maybe ignite. But I don't recommend the barrier. 
Maybe you just want to avoid getting killed and you run something like Exhaust. I haven't seen an Exhaust at all this tournament, so... Uh, looking forward to maybe seeing some more aggressive summoner spells, but... But it is not this day. Wow! Another Dark Binding landing. Oh my goodness. Uh, J Trace... You know, he spent his good sweet time practicing, but now things are actually going to work out. Oh, there's Ultimate being Arcane shifted away from. And you can see he's just, uh, he's not actually looking for kill potential with ults like that. What he's looking to do is starve Ezreal out. So Arrow won't have a whole lot of uh, health, won't have a whole lot of mana. Where's that Dark Binding? He hits this, I think it's game. Some nice moves by Arrow, just walking right back and forth. Trace deep underneath the turret. Oh my gosh, he will land it. Could go under there. One last auto attack would be all it would take, but uh, of course, lacking the uh, the range, or lacking the summoner spell to flash in on that. That's Arrow, head back to base alive. Now, what this is going to do is really kind of seal the deal as far as Trace's push power is supposed to go. Uh, you know, either you'd want to go aggressive with a lot of early AP and then you know, try for a Soul Shackles Dark Binding all in to pick up a kill, or you just kind of play slow and steady, wins the race, and well, if you were looking to win the race, it's Trace! Something, something base, I can't remember exactly what I was supposed to say there, but you get the idea. That turret, very, very low. It has, uh, I don't know, probably like six, 700 HP. Out of 2,500, that's a little bit. At least for the time being, Arrow not necessarily in a, the driver's seat by any means. And keep in mind, for the Solo King, you do have to be 10 CS ahead of your opponent in order to claim victory past 100 CS. So even though we're starting to get out up there in CS, uh, already 64, I picked up for Tracy. You know, shouldn't have too devastating of an advantage. Looking for an early she or an early uh, fade here. What? I would definitely have expected a Sheen here for Ezreal, but there is True Shot Barrage. Gonna miss one CS. No, actually hits them all. Off of that wave, uh, only now uh, about a wave behind. When you look at things, Arrow heading back to base. Does have teleport available. Nice scrying orb usage there for Trace. Really pushing Arrow not only to stop his uh, recall, but also... Wow! Oh my god, Dark Bindings! Hitting all day, front, left, right, back, and center. I don't know how that phrase goes, but you get the idea. Uh, oh, and actually an immediate teleport back into a cannon minion. Trace is just going to immediately ult arrow, force the arcane shift out of here. We'll hit that. Dark Binding actually will hit a creep, and oh, it's a brief lag there for a second, but arrow, one Dark Binding away from certain untimely demise trace hitting the barrier he's just gonna till the turret and, you know arrow's gonna die there too to a dark binding and that's the way the cookie crumbles trace Tur turrets and cookies crumbling simultaneously we'll take down arrow in game number one the solo king best of three So at this point, that is going to do it for our first game in this best of three, but of course, as you may guess from a best of three, it is a best of three games, which means you, there's at least one more game coming your way. And uh, well, for, for Trace, he is, uh, is Morgana definitely on point, and not only was he good at landing all those dark bitings, it, it really feels like with Morgana, you're, you're kind of fighting an inevitable battle where all you have to do is survive, keep putting on pressure with dark bindings, and Eventually, turrets just start to fall because you push them so quickly. And I think that's what Watch was thinking about with the AP Nasus a little bit earlier. Turns out it just doesn't work quite as well. Coming in here to game number two, we'll see what is prioritized as far as the ban list is concerned. There is Arrow, first ban, it's a Morgana. Lol Bunny figured out. 
she should probably ban Morgana after the first game with Trace 2, so no surprise seeing that champion banned away. Equally unsurprising to see a priority towards banning AD carries versus Arrow, uh, specifically as Lucian, which has just been looking on point. I made that uh, made that French perfect sign with like you know the circular hand motion. Either way, thing of beauty, his uh, his Lucian has been so can't expect him to get that. Caitlyn also going to be banned out almost unanimously versus Arrow, but uh, still is a very strong AD carry player. Still likes to play AD carry champions and. Looks to get those CS numbers up there, and uh, of course, one way to do it would be with. Oh no! Is he gonna try the AD Anivia again? Oh my goodness. Okay, I thought Trace was the only one uh, who uh, who played uh, crazy stuff, but no, it's actually gonna be probably an AD Anivia for Arrow. I don't know if this is like his secret pocket pick from solo queue, because I, I looked through. His last remaining matches for like 20 to 30 matches on uh, OPGG, and it didn't show me any uh, any incredible fire versus ice uh, puns up there. Slightly, slightly looking forward to uh, ooh, what could be a Lulu here. You got the ice part. Where's the fire? There's no molten Lulu. Like Molten Wukong, there's Charred Maokai. Well, I guess they wouldn't be too terrible, but uh, of course the Lulu pickup, very, very self, uh, self-contained. Kind of like going with a Karma utility mid laner. Uh, decent at CSing, but the big difference is, you know, A, how do you CS through Pix auto attacks? You can lose a lot of CS by underestimating exactly how much damage that does. Or B, you know, will it just be a, you know, overall lack of damage, lack of push ability to, uh, you know, fight up against, uh, against Anivia. And you can see a, a very, very similar train of thought as far as champions are concerned for, um, for Trace. He actually probably would have liked Anivia himself, given the, the uh, passive Morgana playstyle that he was uh, doing in game number, uh, in game number one. But here in game two, kind of life on the line situation, uh, Arrow. Going to the, uh, what is probably an AD Anivia. And if you think to yourself very carefully about the words probably an AD Anivia, and then every single opportunity you'd think to s actually say that, well, probably uh, not only Anivia, but also going to be a very rare occurrence for you to find anybody who just doesn't kind of give you the, uh, the weird look. But you get the idea, that is going to do it for picks and bands. Now let's hop into uh, the mastery section. Start to look at runes and masteries for Arrow. See if this is AD or AP, and it is in fact AD Anivia. Great. So, this is going to be one interesting way to look at it. You can see AD runes there as well. One point in the Warlord. As you would uh, probably expect. I wouldn't necessarily say it's been something that we've seen unanimously so far in this tournament, but it has been something that has met with some degree of success, picking up just a little bit of extra AD, and of course, more importantly, is going to be itemization. Uh, things that matter most in 1v1s are probably just, uh, I guess, flat runes, and, you know, who gets the first uh, chance to do something. All right, well, looking at uh, Trace's masteries here, you can see kind of the exact same thing, but in a slightly different way. Uh, three points in extra attack speed instead of its TDR. Uh, maybe uh, somewhat baffling, but a similar situation as far as the sustain from the utility tree is concerned. Fairly standard over there. No points in additional move speed. That one second additional, uh, you know, reduced recall time actually can make a decent difference especially when it's uh, a game that will end in the early phase so you want as much time to be able to uh, you know get back to your lane as possible
So that is going to do it for Champion Picks, Bands, Runes, and Masteries for game number two. Here the Solo King, uh, only one, uh, possibly the last game of this last best of three. Arrow versus Trace, and of course Trace up one game to zero after a very dominant Morgana victory. Took the turret at uh, just about nine and a half minutes. We're going to go ahead and actually get into the game here and not all that long. So I do want to thank you guys for watching the Solo King here on Azubu TV. And of course, I want to give a uh, quick mention to Extra Life. Uh, Extra Life is a, um, a charity that we're actually supporting here. And if you guys would like to support them too, you can click the Extra Life link right down below the stream. Uh, it's in support of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. So if you want to help them support them, then of course... Lend your support right down below the stream. It's a uh, good cause, so I do appreciate your support there. But even if you can't support us that way by uh, helping out Extra Life support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, you can, of course, just stay tuned because we've got a whole lot more League of Legends coming your way here on the Solo King. Of course, we'll be get, getting right back into, uh, not right back into game two, but we'll be getting into game two. Trace versus Arrow. Trace up 1 0. In that matchup, let's go ahead and get into game and find out if Trace can close things down or if Arrow can make it back. Gentlemen, and welcome back to the Solo King, a 1v1 Korean tournament uh, featuring all of your favorite champions, players, of course, broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, and of course, I uh, do want to welcome you to not only this tournament, but what could be the last game of the day. Trace faces off against Arrow for what is the last place <laughs> available in uh, the, uh, the playoff brackets from this group stage, so... Uh, in case you guys are just now tuning in, well, you missed a lot of great games, but no worries. There will be both A, VODs available, and B, you can check out all the bracket action information on the players, teams, and really anything you could possibly want to know on Esportspedia by heading over to lol.esportspedia.com and checking out the Solo King 1v Korean 1v1 tournament. So, Arrow versus Trace, gonna face check into Trace, it's like a Trace check, an immediate stun there, continual auto attacks coming out from this Doran's Blade AD and Nivea, Trace in a little bit of trouble, there is flash available, there's a skill up of the shield, otherwise Trace would have died at level one. I don't exactly know what to think about this AD and Nivea, but it is so strong, and Arrow using it to great effectiveness. Both this game and uh, in his previous series versus uh, versus Watch, but he actually wound up winning two one. I think he won one game number one off of an AD and Nivea versus an AP Nasus. By the way, so if you guys are excited for what that sounds like, it was actually a pretty good series. So definitely make sure to go back and watch it. I'm listening to the uh, methodical, uh, melodious sound of what is Anivia auto attacks hitting creeps. And while this will be a very early level, like maybe not early level 2, but it will be a level 2 that Arrow hits before Trace does. We'll keep an eye on things and at least how the early trades go is, you know, Trey's still level one, needs to even up that level discrepancy, one more creep to die. All right, and there we go, level two picked up there for Trace. And you know, while Glitter Lances haven't necessarily been landing so far, neither have auto attacks from Arrow, Wave being kept a little bit too close for comfort there underneath his turret to go for anything too crazily aggressive. A lot of attack speed being built up here for both, or maybe not built up for both players, but they definitely do have a lot of it uh, independently, of course, having a lot of attack speed on Articuno here, uh, aka Anivia, the art artist formerly known as. Uh, interesting, though, to see, you know, quite so much attack speed. I think he had, actually had 14% in his rune page, which is kind of the name of the game being one auto attack after another. 
Nice shield there from Trace, continuing to keep Trace safe from the um, early damage here by Arrow. And of course it is AD Anivia, and while on Anivia you can build basically anything. It's and yeah, probably a little bit better to go for more uh, more ability power. Of course, we'll see how they decide to play things. Is the game progresses. Of course, yes, it's concerned. Much better lead there for Arrow, but that's primarily just off of being in lane for longer. Trace had to walk all the way back from base, and while he didn't miss all that much, you can see it's very comparable and comparable. In levels, there is still an almost entire wave of CS advantage here for Arrow. So, a little bit more than that actually. He is now 8, almost 9 CS ahead of his Lulu opponent. And while, you know, sure, Trace is going to be able to teleport back in, excuse me, back in the lane, Double Doran's and Sustain is, uh, you know, maybe a little bit stronger than a single Doran's Blade, but I'm just not sure that there's going to be very much that Trace can do here. Anivia does not have Ignite, so it's not going to be able to be used aggressively. Uh, you know, Trace doesn't have Ignite either. So just considering it, exactly what are both players' options. Keep in mind, uh, the uh, Cryo Phoenix passive for Arrow. If he dies in that Cryo Phoenix yeah. egg, that means that he actually not only, well, A, Guys in real life, but you also have to kill him through the respawn in order for it to count as a kill. Nice crystallize there, but honestly, a level five as arrow should he really be skilling crystallize? Um, you know, maybe he's not necessarily looking to his skills for all that much damage, but at the same time, it would be really right, really, uh, really nice to you know be able to do things uh, yourself here. So for at least as far as trace is concerned. Next two days represent, uh, I, I guess, two very, very big days in uh, in, in his life. Uh, so, talking about kind of the mechanics, what is the win condition here for Arrow versus Trace? It's gonna be either CS for a traditional Anivia. Like you know, you look at Anivia and you think, okay, well she's going to you know, just ult the wave. Use that blizzard to continue to just wave clear over and over again and went off of CS. But it's a very different, okay, probably not the wall you were looking for there, Arrow. Um, it's a very different strategy for AD Anivia. It was looking for much more just actual champion damage than you would necessarily expect to be the purpose, the method behind the madness for most, uh, for most Anivias. Trace, though, doing a good job at pushing back in, even though he's about a wave of CS behind. The Glitter Lance is still landing, and, uh, we'll wait and consider it pushed. Arrow is having a little bit of a difficult time last hitting underneath turret. We'll hit most of them by all accounts. Uh, it's still about 9 CS up as the wave resets. You do need a 10 CS advantage to win the game off of just CS alone. I feel like the best champions are ones that will actually have a, a number of different options as far as like exactly how they want to win the game. Not just, you know, their ability to win the game one way. You want to be able to to win it based on what your your opposing your opposing uh, you know, champion is. If you're if you're playing against something super aggressive, the way you win the game is not to die. So much pressure uh, in your lane. Usually your team will be able to you know, pick up overall more gold elsewhere. So uh, just a thought. But as far as Arrow's yeah. concerned, he's playing AD Anivia. And you ask yourself, you know, Will Rapid, what on earth is AD Anivia and why is he playing it? Uh, the answer is actually. I, I want to say fairly simple. Uh, I got a chance to uh, talk to, I think I interviewed his, uh, or he was uh, recently interviewed, and uh, in the, uh, the interview he said that not only was he, uh, you know, fairly confident in situations like this, but uh, in the uh, recent, uh, I guess, analyst panel who was asking, uh, or we asked, uh, you know, which player would come out on top. I think Arrow won that as well, so definitely something to keep an eye on. Trace, specifically, though, uh, has always favored these, like, very, very heavy push-based champions, and slowly but surely is starting to win this push war right back, so I honestly can't complain too much about the Lulu pick. The Glitter Lance is, uh, you know, may not be quite as effective as, uh, you know, 
pushers as, uh, you know, things like, uh, I want to say Black sh or not Black Shield, Tormented Soil. But at the same time, look at all this harass that Trace is putting down onto Arrow, onto Arrow's turret specifically. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, Shield coming up, anticipating a little bit of extra damage, but picks can only help you so much. Trace will back out without the majority of that damage done to the Shield. Continue Lulu auto, auto attacks onto this turret and turret dropping very, very low. Now Trace is very vulnerable to going down. If this, uh, oh my gosh, he's actually just gonna go for it. He's got a couple of more auto attacks, but using that giant growth there, somewhat premature. It cost a lot of extra mana. Arrow, though, is almost out of mana himself, so. Timing these backs equally, a minion will advance up the wave and give the information to Arrow that yes, in fact, Trace is going back. And so now we finally get to see exactly how this matchup is going to play out. Double Doran's blade, triple Doran's blades, double Doran's rings versus the uh, holy quintility of five Doran's rings here for Trace. Good sweet lord, this will be uh, this will be a game. That's for sure. We'll see if both the AD and the AP here from Arrow can make a difference on a trace. Stun to come out. There's some more damage off of the Ice Shard. One more auto attack gonna come down. There's the crit coming down as well. Barrier used. It's gonna be one, possibly two auto attacks away from death. But Arrow out of mana and out of the ability to uh, follow up for the kill. If he gets just enough mana off of these last hits from Dorian's rings, and is able to flash in there and pick up the kill. He is going to have to war watch out for Trace's ability to save himself. Not only is he going to have that wild growth up in about 25 seconds. About 20 seconds. Arrow is going... Or, uh... Arrow at this point starting to get up there and CS you can see a uh, good job by Trace though to have drawn things all the way back to even and to be fair this evenness in CS is after being behind I believe almost 9 CS Trace just trying to desperately go up there push the wave make sure that these minions go in there is the knock up Trace gonna look in a little bit of different trouble here will be forced to either flash away actually doesn't have flash has barrier where's the last auto attack he's gonna egg arrow but can he finish off the kill I don't think so now there are a lot of creeps there but but after being so low, Trace is just going to be forced to run here. Arrow with that Cryo Phoenix egg pop, but still a kill nonetheless. If you, uh, kind of a wake up call to Anivia, you have your passive popped, and that's going to be all she wrote. Not, uh. Not exactly a super de duper amount of flexibility. So closing in on victory conditions for really for both teams for uh, for Arrow he needs a grand total of what is that uh, let's see eight carry the two he's gonna need about ten more CS to win the game um, of course that would be ten CS over Trace's CS so uh, just uh, have to keep that comparative. CSing in mind uh, he is level nine and of course with this sort of you know. Blade ring, blade ring, blade combo that he's got going on here. Uh, you know, it's not incredibly uh, surprising. Uh, the mobility boots picked up for Trace, I do not agree with. I think it would have been much, much better to uh, pick up, uh, I guess, maybe Sorcerer's Shoes, but might not have had enough money to, uh, to go for those. I don't think you sell a Doran's ring to get Sorcerer's Shoes, just in case you don't have enough money. Um, selling items all always pretty bad. It means you lose like you know 10 to 20 CS based on the item that you sell. So probably never a good idea. But at the same time, this is coming down to it here. We're 13 minutes into the game. We're at 103 to 102 CS. The, the CS is identical, but now all with these minions pushing in. There is the crystallize trying to block out these minions just to keep them away from this turret, but. Oh, we're gonna get one minion auto attack off of that wave and slowly but surely this turret dropping lower and lower is this the win condition that trace is gonna use to 2-0 arrow and advance out of the group i don't know 
know about that. It's going to be very difficult, but here we have a whole wave of minions pushing in. Trey's actually going to take a lot of damage. There is the Wild Growth just clicking away on the turret, getting over the Whimsy. The last auto attack from Trace is good, and he'll take down the turret. And apparently the stream along with it, that is an unfortunate time to lag, but uh, you can see the turret has clearly exploded. And there you go, Solo King of this half of Group A-2 is Trace. Dominant 2-0 victory over Arrow, and of course, uh, maybe not dominant isn't the word, but still an impressive way to win the game. Nonetheless, had barrier health picks for the shield and a giant growth just enough health to survive long enough to be able to tick down Arrow's turret. So congratulations to Trace. You'll be the second player today to advance out of his group along with Pure. Pure with a 2-1 over Pilot. Of course, Trace with now a 2-0 over Arrow. They will advance to the playoff bracket to face off against Someday. 2-1 Nagne and Marin took a 2-0 victory over Hachani. So it's going to be interesting to uh, see an uh, interview. Get a little bit of insight here with Trace to feel how, to uh, check out how he felt about today's games. We'll be translating this interview for you guys here in just a little bit, so give me one moment. Let's see what's going on here with an interview with Trace. Alright, so we have Trace on the phone. We'll be asking him a series of questions and getting his responses to them. So give me uh, just a, uh, a brief moment. We do not have translators like Barry or Chobra, so. <laughs> 아, you bear with us, it will be done in just a moment, and hopefully everything will work out. I uh, may actually have to skip the interview uh, this time around, as my uh, my Korean is not fluent enough to be able to translate this on my own. Okay. <laughs> 자 먼저 A 그룹입니다. 자 개막전에선 썸데이 선수와 마린 선수가 올라가는 어, 그런 모습들을 보여줬는데, 자 오늘은 어, 피오 선수와 트레이스 선수가 12강으로 올라가게 되었습니다. 이게 지금 보니까 KT도 올라갔고 SKT도 하나 올려놨고 나진도 올라갔고 진에어도 올라갔고 밸런스 맞게 다그 소속 팀이 하나씩 올라간 것 같아서 대진표가 네. 좀 이쁘게 잘 됐다. 아 저는 좀 이렇게 보이네요. 그렇습니다. 이제 CJ도 올라가야겠죠? 그렇죠. 밑에 또 네. CJ 경기가 많이 남아 있으니까요. 자 이렇게 해서 오늘까지의 경기 결과가 네, 나와 있는 대진 상황인데 자, 뭐 12강까지도 정말 네, 지금까지 걸어온 게도 정말 네, 그런 팍 터지는 싸움 긁어 튀는 경기였었는데 12강 이때 보통 정말 기가 막히네요 썸데이, 마린, 퓨어, 트리스 이름만 들어도 승부 결과를 예측할 수 없는 대진이 완성이 되고 있습니다 자 이렇게 해서 대진 상황까지 살펴봤습니다 자 이제 남아 있는 것은 진행어 트리스 선수의 자, 승리 인터뷰인데요 잠시 기다려주시면 어, 준비를 된 대로 여러분들께 승리 인터뷰를 들려드리도록 하겠습니다. 자 날이 갈수록 재미와 그런 감동을 더해가는 네 오늘 어, 코리아 솔루션 토너먼트입니다. 자뭐 이후 경기를 네 3경기죠. 바로 내일 펼쳐지게 되는 네. 월요일 경기입니다. 내일이죠. 네. 자 이게 이제 더, 어, 경기 영상이 언제 나갈지는 저희가 확실하게 말씀을 드릴 수는 없겠습니다. Still waiting on that last and final interview, guys. So stick around. We will have that interview coming up here in just a second with Trace, victorious winner of this half of uh, bracket A2. So don't want to, uh, you don't want to miss that. We're still trying to unearth him. Trace too busy partying, celebrating his solo king win. 
And he's like on a piece of paper in front of him, just like drawing circles inside, and just like tracing holes here and there, and trying to fit his body through. I, 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 I don't know how exactly that works, but it does appear as if we have finally have Trace on the phone. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get this interview started. Trace 선수. 네. 아, 네. 안녕하세요. 자, 오늘 안녕하세요. 트레이스 선수 12강 진출을 먼저 축하드립니다. 네. 네. 아, 덤덤하시네요. 뭐 당연히 올라갈 줄 아셨나요? 어, 조금 불안했는데 어, 생각보다 무난하게 올라간 것 같아요. 음, 그렇습니다. 네. 자, 아무래도 가장 인상적이었던 경기는 마지막 그 룰루와 네, 에로 선수 애니비아의 경기일 텐데. 자, 경기 네. 치르면서 어땠나요? 자, 마지막에 정말 쫄깃했었거든요. 어 마지막 경기는 그 1렙 때 괜히 부시에 숨어 있다가 네. 그 손해를 좀 많이 본것 같아서 그 점이 약간 좀 아쉬웠다. 네, 네 그게 아까 전 경기에 타워를 치더라고요. 네. 아네아 네. 아, 타워 치던데 그거 한번 한번 더 치면 한번 죽여보려고 기다리고 있었는데 네. 부시로 들어오더라고요. 그래가지고 음, 많이 맞고 집에 갔어요. 오늘 경기 중에서 내가 이, 이 판이 제일 힘들었다는 거 있으세요? 이 판요? 역시 마지막 판 그냥 아 마지막 판 네. 아, 역시 뭐 애니비아가 그, 잘 버텼죠 그렇습니다 부시 안에서 죽을 뻔해가지고 마지막에 <웃음> 아네 굉장히 또 솔직한 그런 감성을 <웃음> 보여주시는 네, 우리 찬동가십니다 자뭐 임시원에서도 궁금했던 점이 있었다고 들었는데요 롤뿌린 선수 상대할 때 굉장히 무난하게 상대를 하셨는데 마지막에 네. 오르간으로 CS 하나 챙기는 건 의도한 건가요? 어 그걸 의도했으면 저는 너무 약간 인성이 쓰레기가 <웃음> 됐고 네. 당연히 이게 의도적으로 한건 아니고 그냥 W를 썼는데 그 모르가나 약간 복불복 CS 먹기에 안 먹어져 가지고 네. 못 먹었어요 그냥. 음 그렇습니다. Congratulations to entering the final twelve. Um, did you know that you would answer? 개인적으로 궁금한 게 이후 대전에 1대1 매체 그 아트로스 정도도 좀 생각해 볼수 있나요? But thankfully I was able to make it in. 아까 그 큐오 큐오 선수 그 렉사이 보셨죠? Another question asked. The last game was actually pretty close with Lulu versus. Uh, uh, and he says, yeah, when he was in the brush, I thought it was a little scary. I thought he would do what he did the first game when he hit the tower and was going to kill him. But he actually came into the brush and I almost died, so it was pretty scary. Next question is, <laughs> thank you for being so honest. And uh, I didn't quite catch his answer to that. 더 재밌는 경기 보여드릴 수 있도록 노력하겠습니다. 네, 음, 자, 감사합니다. 말씀도 잘하시네요. 네, 자, 진해오 팀의 트레이스 선수였습니다. 자, 오늘 경기 축하드립니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. All right, uh, last, uh, last question. We'll be coming out here in just a second. As we get ready to close out the day, of course, this is the last game of the day. So, of course, last answer is uh, that he didn't actually prepare anything special. But it wasn't as fun for his uh, his last match, so uh, he said he'd prepare a little bit more for a fun match next time, and wanted to thank everybody for cheering him on. So that is going to be it for the Solo King for today. If you guys have missed any of the Solo King action, of course, stay tuned to Azubu TV. You can, of course, catch the VODs after tonight's programming. And, uh, of course, if you have liked the players, you can find most of these players actually playing streaming their games here on Azubu TV. Trace actually is streaming right now, so if you want to go watch the guy that just won his Solo King matches, Trace will be streaming, so uh, definitely go back and uh, check him out. And of course, uh, continue to support all of the uh, the Korean streamers here on Azubu TV. You can find their streams on the Azubu front page. Of course, do you want to give a big shout out to them for making the Solo King possible. Of course, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any feedback about today's games, you can leave it for us on, uh, on Twitter. Tweet at Azubu TV, hashtag the Solo King. And of course, I uh, would love to hear what you thought about tonight's broadcast. Of course, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can find me on Twitter at Rabbit Casting. I'd love to hear what you thought about tonight's show. And if you have any room for improvement, I would love to uh, hear what your thoughts are about the broadcast. So thank you very much for watching. This is going to do it for the Solo King day at number two. For scheduling, information, player info, and everything you could possibly want to know, head over to azubu.tv for more information. Thank you for watching and have a great night. <laughs>